I am a pilgrim and a stranger traveling through this worsome land. And I got a home. Uh, we got our fireplace done finally in the cabin, and being as we didn't try to do a lot of stuff primitive or the primitive way, uh, we thought it'd be fun or neat or silly or something or other to try to build one, build our fire with the primitive ways. So I'm going to try first a flint and steel method and then after that I'm going to try the hand drill which is way more primitive. But uh, on your flint and steel you had to have, this This would have been during the mountain man, as they call it, times and the fur trade eras. This black stuff here, all that is is, is half burnt or carbonized, really, uh, pure cotton cloth. It's called char cloth. And you make your own, but you can just take an old cotton t-shirt or cotton balls or whatever. Cotton t-shirts work real nice, but they would have took strips of cotton, and you set fire to it, and you have a little can. They would have had a little can back in those days, and uh, you burn it, set fire to it, and, and when it starts to get where it's all burnt up, turning black, then you drop it down in the can and put the lid on it and smother it out, and it keeps it from burning completely up to ash but it gets it to where that it's real volatile, in other words, so, so hopefully one of these sparks that comes off this piece of flint, a hot piece of flint will fly off here hopefully and land in that and set fire to that, and if it does, it'll just start spreading through that because it's, it's real easy to catch fire. Now, your piece of flint has to be sharp on the edge. It can't be dull. Which is why I had the deer antler to go around the edges. I sharpened all the edges of this thing because I figured, being as I haven't had a whole lot of practice with this, it'd take every edge I had, probably. Sometimes I get lucky and sometimes I don't. But if you'll notice, it's good and sharp like a cutting edge, but, but not real thin. So that's important on your, on your flint. You could do that with a copper bopper if you wanted to, they call it a cut modern tool, anything to knock it off. This right here is not what a mountain man would have used. He would have had a striker that people have seen. It's like a half or semi-circle kind of deal you hold in your hand, but it's high carbon steel, and this, I, I don't, I have one of those strikers, but can't find it. So this is a file, or, or yeah, it's a file, so it's the same high carbon steel, and I'm just going to try it with this file, and uh, that's what I'm going to use to strike the flint. This is a piece of, I call it tender fungus. Now, I don't know if it's what they call a true tender, tender fungus or not, but it works great as what they call a coal extender. If I get a spark to start in this char cloth, it'll just start s spreading, but it won't be real, real big and hot. So I'm going to try to put it over in some of this ground up dry tender fungus that I got off the side of a locust tree on the side of the mountain. And it'll spread through that and make a bigger ember. And then when I get that big ember, hopefully, if everything goes right, I'm going to take that and put it over inside what we call a bird's nest. And this, this one happens to be made out of uh, ground or uh, crushed up and beat up uh, cedar bark which makes a good bird's nest, but you can use any kind of dry grass and whatever. Something that'll burn, something that's good and dry. And uh, I'll say one thing, uh, there may be people out there in the world that can go out in the woods in a rainstorm and get the materials and do this, but I wouldn't stake my life on it because I've tried it and it's hard enough when you've got dry materials and I think that primitive people carried a fire starting kit with them in a dry pack just like we would carry matches or a big lighter today and if they didn't they probably froze to death somewhere. Now, that's my opinion. John McPherson would probably tell me I didn't know what I was talking about but I'm not John McPherson. So okay what we're going to do and also 
a mountain man that really knew what he was doing and done this all the time would not have a whole pile of his char cloth here. He'd just have a little piece, probably up in his hand in a piece of leather, and he'd have a striker to come down and strike a piece onto that, a piece of this flint onto that. But since I'm using this file, it eats up my char, uh, char cloth that way, so I'm just going to try to hold it up here above it and see if I can shower a spark off into that, and by having a larger area of char cloth, i got a better chance of that happening. So here goes for nothing. We'll try it. And there it is. See it glowing right here? Now if I can get that up, let's get a cold extender, see if we can get a, I should have done this first. I think it'll be alright. Main thing is not to panic. See I'm grinding this fungus up, which I should have done a while ago, but that'll just keep going through that char cloth, set far as the whole world here in a few minutes. Now I can take that and put it over in that, take the edge of my knife here and put that over in that fungus. Hopefully get it started going. If not, see I'm going to have to take some of this off because I don't want to burn it all up. Hmm? See there? There's one. It's alright. We'll use them too. Put a little on top of that. This is not necessary, but just to make sure that you're going to have plenty of good hot stuff to go in you. See this over here still burning? <laughs> I'm going to have to take him off here and mash him. Don't want to waste my charcoal. Huh? Now see my tender fungus is burning now. And I ain't got to get in no hurry now and panic and all that because that's going to sit there for minutes and minutes and minutes. And slowly burn through that. I'll just give a little air. You can see it glowing, or I hope you can. Have you seen it glowing enough? <laughs> okay. So now we've got something to start with. Let's work out pretty good there. Now, let's see. I'm gonna use this here. I've got another little bundle over there. Look here, look at this, look at this stuff over here set, still set afar. See, that's dangerous. <laughs> Just don't hardly want to go out when you get. I tell you what I'm gonna do for that. I'm just gonna put it over here in the, in the fireplace because that's dangerous to have in your car or whatever. I can make more char cloth. But okay, now we got our little tender bundle here, and I'm gonna do something else. I still ain't worried about that. It's all right. I'm gonna put a little grind a little bit of this right in there. This ain't necessary, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I've got it. One thing that'll do is help hold your little coal in there. Not let it slip out the bottom. Now, very carefully, take this and dump it in the center of your tender fungus. And you don't want to be holding this out over your cabin uh, floor. Very gently at first. As it gets more bigger, as it gets bigger, 
a little harder blunt. Flames. <laughs>